Today we're going to dive into the basics of torque tuning, so stick around. This video is intended for educational purposes only. Improper tuning can cause catastrophic mechanical damage and you should do your own research before attempting any changes like this to a vehicle. Attempt custom tuning at your own risk. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and if you're here you've probably already seen my introduction to torque tuning which I'll throw up in the corner and I want to give you a heads up. This is a little bit different than torque management. Torque management was something that started coming out uh, towards the beginning of the fourth generation platforms. Torque tuning came out towards the end of the fourth generation and as far as I know is, is on all fifth generation platforms. And the purpose behind it is to basically create a model in which controls power from the source all the way to the ground. As I said, I get into that in depth in the other video where I differentiate between torque tuning and torque management. So if you haven't checked it out, uh, click on that link that I left behind and, and go check that out. It's good to know before we get into this. Today's video is a little bit more about the basics, how you can get more power, more responsiveness out of your vehicle. Now, there are a couple different schools of thoughts on this, and one of them is that you leave all of this alone and nothing changes. That's kind of the older mentality of whenever this first started coming out. That was really before the virtual torque tables came out. Now, the new school of thought is, yes, you're going to have to modify these tables. If not, you're going to run into issues. And some of those issues are things like, maybe the throttle body closes off because suddenly you're making more power than the engine is expecting and it will literally back power down. Uh, so these are things to take into, uh, into consideration. Now whenever we get into the tables here, which I'll go ahead and open up, if you go underneath edit and into your virtual torque, and this is a stock 2015 Silverado, but it's going to look the same for about all applications. Whenever we get into the tables here, you're going to see a couple different things. The big ones being the table groups. We're going to have multiple groups we're probably going to be uh, ignoring the displacement on demand. I'm guessing that you're not running DOD if you've made it to this point in the tuning series. Uh, but we will have to do the air mass and map, and if you're running flex fuel, the E85 maps. I have not done the E85 tune yet. I got the sensor installed. I have a video out there. I can drop a link for you in the corner for how to install the sensor if you've got one of the platforms that did not have it from the factory. It's pretty easy stuff, pretty easy to set up. There will be a video down the road that specifically deals with flex fuel tuning. But for now, we want to talk about the air mass and the map tables. You've got two different tables based on kind of what's in control of your power delivery. And so we're looking at air mass, which is in milligrams and is based kind of on the grams per second uh, cylinder air mass. And then we have the map, which is KPA, so it's a pressure based map. We will be editing both of these maps, but we're going to kind of edit both of these maps the same. Here on the right, what we're seeing is we've got our RPMs, we've got our air mass in this situation, and then we've got a bunch of spark tables, and these align with based on how much spark, advance, or retard that you're running. We will probably, for the most part, focus more on the positive spark tables because that's obvious that's where we're going to be making most of our horsepower in these situations so as we get down here towards the end where we say spark 30 and 40 is which is the max of our table uh, we will be focusing more on those let me blow that up so you can see it there what you'll see over here on the right is kind of a chart and the cool thing about this is specifically down here if you look at the 10 degree spark you get an idea of the max uh, torque on there kind of looks like what a dyno chart would look like, even more so generally on the map. So if we go over to the map side, I mean, let's, let's look, that's, that looks like a torque curve that you're going to see on a dyno where it goes up and kind of plateaus off. So the cool thing about that is, is, is it gives us an idea of what we're trying to accomplish. So as we make more horsepower on, and torque on these vehicles, we have to go in and adjust these tables. Let me answer your question right away. No, you can't go into this thing and just max it out to 2,000 foot-pounds or something and expect it to work. If you overshoot the actual amount of torque that your vehicle makes, it's going to cause some really wonky things to happen because the engine is going to try and make that kind of power. And it's not going to be able to. So we want to try and stick to kind of what we're making. Okay, let's say that you go out and you get a supercharger or something and you throw it on your vehicle. We know beforehand that we were basically trying to achieve 
no vacuum at wide open throttle. Now we're actually gonna have boost on there. So we can kind of get an idea of how much power we should be generating based off of that. So if we were making 500 foot pounds of torque at a vacuum or no vacuum at wide open throttle and say we add oh, seven PSI, we should be getting about 50% more power. So we can add that in there and say, well, now we should be up in the 700 foot pound range. That's fast and loose. Obviously, the best way of doing this is on the dyno, getting the actual curve and applying that. But that being said, that means we can come in down here and say, we wanna make the assumptions that, so we're gonna max this out at the very last table and look at what we have. In this situation, the truck's gonna make about 340 peak torque, 353, that's what they're saying. So we wanna bring those up to, let's say 500 foot pounds. So the cool thing that we can do about that is we can, times it, let's go 1.1. That'll add a 10% every time we hit this button. So, boom, there we're at 508. Now what we want to do is highlight these cells and you notice how it's doing all of them at once. You can do link selections and that's how I prefer to do it because it kind of fills in the gaps for you. But now we want to interpolate in between and now we've shifted the whole torque table up to match kind of what our ideal torque scenario is. After that, we have to do the same thing that we do on the virtual volumetric. We have to come in, calculate the tables. Well, actually, you extrapolate the coefficients, then you calculate the tables. So now we've got our new tables in place. We'll do the same thing for the air mass. Come down to the very bottom one. We're making peak horsepower. And as I said, this one's quite a bit higher. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take that up three times and that puts us up in the 730 range. Probably not gonna hit that, but at least we're staying kind of consistent across the board. We'll interpolate, extrapolate, and calculate. Kind of like that, interpolate, extrapolate, calculate. So that's the easy way of doing this. Now there is, as I said, a more advanced way. I'm gonna do a video later on that goes into that, that shows you how to actually set up a histogram, log your, your engine torque versus what your table is trying to say your predicted torque is, is what we would be getting out of this. And through that, we can actually see the differential, whether or not we're reaching it or not. You always want to be just a smidge above what it's trying to do. That way it's trying to accomplish the most amount of horsepower. Uh, but that being said, said that's a video for another day. Keep your eyes peeled. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and click the subscribe button down in the corner because you don't want to miss that one. It gets a little bit more fancy there, but for now, Let's look at the scanner side of it. I've kind of got it set up here. I've stripped down a lot of my uh, PIDs on here that I don't necessarily need. I keep a lot of the basics one, uh, air temp. Of course, we need the airflow related ones such as mass airflow and, and uh, cylinder air mass, obviously, and uh, manifold absolute pressure. And then of course, if you've got a wide band, let's get your wide band on there along with your equivalence ratio and any of your spark stuff such as time in advance and knock retard. You want to make sure they're, they're in there. After that though, we've got quite a few torque parameters that we can choose from. And this is kind of the, the bulk that I choose from. It's probably overkill. You probably don't need all these, but I like to go through and look at a lot of this data. And that is delivered engine torque versus engine torque. So engine torque is kind of what we're trying to accomplish. Delivered engine torque is what we're actually, is calculating that we get out of there. Now there is a very important thing to remember about that. If your uh, math tables or your math curve and your speed density tables or volumetric efficiency tables are not good, that torque number will be bad. That is part of that calculation that you've heard me talk about in the speed density tuning uh, video. You have to have your speed density tuning dialed in really good or else your calculated engine torque is going to be all over the place. You might be seeing 1,200 foot-pounds of torque whenever you're only making half of that. Something to keep in mind. After that, I like to do final torque, uh, final throttle torque request, and this is basically the response of you putting the pedal down and what the ECU calculates as the torque that is being called for respective to the throttle position. I know that's a lot to take in, but basically I'm putting the pedal here. The ECU says, okay, I should be generating, you know, 600 foot pounds of torque. Uh, predicted engine torque command. Now this is what is driving the torque. Most of the time that's going to be pedal. Every once in a while you'll see things like transmission in there during shifts, things like that. So that is kind of like what is commanding, literally, it's, as I said, it's what is commanding the torque. 
Same ordeal with the predicted axle torque command and the immediate axle torque command. Those are kind of your what your axle torque is calling for, what the engine is or the ECU is calling for for axle torque, and whether or not you're meeting that. If there's some disparity in between those things, we have some issues that we want to check out. Okay, we're looking at the predicted engine torque source, the immediate engine torque source, and the predicted axle torque source. Those will show you what is in control of the torque request at that moment in time. A lot of times it's going to be things like throttle, engine, uh, axle, transmission. You know, and a prime example is if it says transmission, that means the transmission is trying to shift and it's probably telling the engine, hey, dial back the power a little bit. I'm making a shift right now. So it's good to know what is in control as we go through this process. Okay, we're plugged into the scanner here, we're logging, and as you can see, our predicted engine torque source right now is idle. That's because we're idling. If I bump the throttle, it goes to axle. Whenever I let off the throttle, it's gonna go to none most likely because there's nothing calling for torque at that point in time. Uh, the numbers are a little bit high, that's because my tables are a little bit off since I've been doing so much to the truck recently, but the main thing to kind of look at right now is how we have a predicted engine torque command. It's commanding between 40 and 50 foot-pounds of torque, and we're actually delivering right below 40. So that's pretty good right there. That means that everything's copacetic for the most part. But, you know, just something to log. That way you have this data moving forward. The cool thing about it is, is if you add these data sets whenever you're logging, later on, whenever we want to build out the histograms, that data will already be in there and you can actually use old logs to bump, bump this information against to see how your torque tune is. So, something to keep in mind. Okay, I mean, that's pretty much it from the basic standpoint. That gives you an idea of what you're looking at and what you need to do to accomplish more power. Now, much like everything else, you're gonna to have to go out and you're gonna to have to drive and you're gonna to have to feel whether or not it works. Uh, you can log things and specifically look at whatever is in command and make sure that you don't have something that is taking over the command. You should basically always have driver or pedal in command at all times whenever you are doing rips. If something else takes over other than trans because it's shifting, you might have something limiting you on your torque tune. So, as a good rule of thumb, at least in my world, I like to go ahead and start dialing that thing up about 10% at a time you know, in, until I get into the range of where I think it's at. Then we can get into the more advanced stuff, which there will be a, a video on later where I show you exactly how to log the torque and dial that thing in. And as I said, if you have not gotten your uh, fueling set up properly, you need to go ahead and do that now before you start this process. This is kind of the last thing that we do uh, as far as the engine tuning process goes on, on these Gen 5 motors. And trust me, you can really feel it. If you if you run into these issues specifically on forced induction uh, vehicles, this will make a huge difference. I've done this on a couple supercharged vehicles, and it has been night and day for all of them that I've done it on, including my own. So uh, that's that's pretty much the sum of it. Uh, once again, I want to thank you for taking the time to stop by, watch the content, leave comments behind if you have any questions or any suggestions. And uh, I appreciate the occasional thumbs up from you guys. And, and of course, if you haven't subscribed already, I highly suggest you click the button down there in the corner because there will be more videos coming up. So we've got, uh, as I said, we're going to have a more advanced torque tuning video coming to the series eventually. And then we'll look at doing some actual torque management. We'll get into what we need to do on the torque management for these later model cars. And I'll talk a little bit about torque management on the earlier cars and some of the things to look out for. On top of that, we might get into some transmission stuff. I'm not the best at transmissions, but I can give you some tips and tricks to firm up your shifting, make it shift a little bit quicker, and still be safe. That's the nice thing about the new setups. As long as you don't go crazy on the torque management, even whenever you do dial the torque tune up, this thing is smart enough to say, hey, I need to dial the power back to make sure I'm not tearing stuff up. So, hey, as always, thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.